So first up, we've got Andy from Boxing Social. Hello, Andy. Uh, Mr. Savage, how are you? Very good, brother. Very good. Nice to talk to you again. Yeah, it is to you as well, sir. Um, we, I'll just say it there, Mr. Savage. You know, whenever we do an interview, and when, when we did one in Milton Keynes, you said to me, when it comes to fight week, it's no longer Alan Babich, it's for Savage who's there. Talk to me about that switch of mentality. We know that you and Tom have spoken very highly of each other. You've got you've got them very well up until this point. Will it be harder to, to kind of really tune into the savage mode, knowing how well you get on with Tom? No, listen, that was the the same thing was last time with Neil Kennedy. You know, he was such a good guy. All right? Now now I'm good. I'm chilled. But when I got into that ring, it was again the same, the same, same stuff. You know, I can't control it, and I don't want to. You know, I just let him do all the dirty work, and I'm gonna be good with Tom after. But I don't want now to look at him or talk to him or stuff like that. You know, Savage doesn't want to. You know, he doesn't care. I just wanna. He, he's a, he's my nemesis. You know, on the Saturday 21, and it's gonna be done with. It's gonna be dealt with. You know. Tom and yourself have both promised that this will be a terrific fight, a fan-friendly fight on Saturday night. Everybody knows what to expect from yourself, as we do with Tom. Is there a pressure at all to make sure that this does live up to the expectations that you both have set for this fight? Well, listen, I think the pressure is on, on him, you know, because I do the same thing every time. And that is the beauty of it, because nobody can do nothing against it. He knows my game plan. It's, it's to knock him out. Since second one, you know, so all the pressure is on him because I just I just leave my savage and he does he does the same time every every time every time I'm gonna do the same stuff until somebody knocks me out unconscious and I don't see that happening with Tom Little, you know, because I don't think he has a punch. He he, he didn't really win a fight in like two years, so I think it's not really very realistically he can put up some kind of resistance. I don't know, but. Let's see. You know, it's the same. I don't underestimate Tom Little. He's been in there with with top guys. You know, Alan Tom said that if this fight goes past five rounds, he will see it as a long fight. Do you believe that's true? Do you believe that yourself? Do you think this fight will stop before maybe the fifth round? And if it doesn't, then it's going to be a long fight. Well, listen, Hergovic stop stop him in four. So I gotta I gotta do it before. You know, <laughs> I don't like Hergovic, so I do everything to. To, to do him wrong, you know, so I think it's going to be over much, much sooner than five. Yeah. But I would like to actually, I would like to go to the deeper rounds to show the people because I do on my sparring sessions eight rounds, 100 punches per round, every round. So it would be good for people to see. So if you can take me there, I'll be grateful. I, will, I really would, you know. I, for now, I have five fights, only 10 rounds. So if he can take me longer than every single than all of those five guys I'll be grateful I mean Alan that's that's my final question I'll speak to you another time thank you thank you brother see ya thanks Andy if we go to James from Pro Boxing Fans next please hi Alan how you doing hello James hello again um, just a few from me um, first of all see with Tom Little should you get past him who are you looking at who are your targets next well, listen, I said I want to fight in December also. <laughs> people are kind of, oh, this is a full-time job for the Savage. As long as people want to see me, I'm going to fight. I don't care. I, I would like it to be a giant. You know, Tom Little is a giant. He's much bigger than me. That, that's what I like. For the next fight, I would like even bigger if they can find one, you know. You mentioned he's Tom Little's a lot bigger than you. Does that pose any different threat to you? No, what, what threat, bro? Listen. People don't know, people forget that real, true, true heavyweights are 90 something kilos heavier. You know, they're not over 110, 115 kilos, two meters. It's very hard to move around and you can't block 100 punches when you have two meters and one, 102. People don't get it. You know, I got that and uh, I see it as an easy fight. When I get the bigger man, it is the easier fight for the service. And also, you was linked with Dave Allen before he has announced his retirement. Just get a reaction from you. How do you feel, feel and do you think he's made the right choice? Well, I think he is. You know, every time somebody said uh, he want to retire from boxing, that's the truth. You got to listen to him and I wish him all the best. I think he did an amazing job. I was his fan. I'm still his fan. I think he did an amazing job from nothing, from scrap to, to gold, you know. And uh, I really 
I'm happy for him. I wanted that fight, so I'm I'm kind of a little bit annoyed, but I, I do want that fight still. But I think he's gonna get back. You know, if he returns, Savage is gonna be here. You know, with a couple of more KOs on the record. But if he ever returns, I want to fight him. You know? But for now, I wish him all the best in his retirement. And just the last one from me. You mentioned that uh, you're not very friendly with Filip Hergovic. There's talk of Hergovic versus Michael Hunter. How would you see that fight going if that were to happen? Well, I'm not good with him, but I think he would beat Hunter. You know, I know he's a very good boxer because we have the same coach, same trainer. So I respect, I respect him boxing wise. You know, I don't think he's he's like a man. He's shit, but the boxing wise, he's very good. I think he would beat Hunter. You know, I think he's too technical and he's he's a good boxer. Fantastic, Alan. All the best to speak to you soon. Thank you, brother. Thanks, James. If we go to Ames from Boxing News TV next. Ames here for Boxing News TV. Pleasure to meet you, Alan. How are you? Hello. Hello. Very good, brother. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Uh, just uh, whilst we were talking about uh, Philip Hergovic, what was your reaction to his fight against Rydell Booker? That's a boring fight. Tell me one boxing fan who, who waited for that fight. No one. Bro. Boring fight. I don't know. I don't know what to say. It was a sparring. It was a bad sparring session. I, I spoke to Nissa Sauland and Philip, Philip Hergovic. They said that they had offered you the fight in the past and you and your team had went quiet. Is that true? You were offered the fight? <laughs> they never offered the fight. Well, what was he talking about? It's crazy. Bro. He would never fight me. I know he wouldn't. I'm going to make him fight me. He will fight me eventually, but he never offered the fight. No, that's not true. You're, forget Philip Hergovic for now, you're fighting Tom Little. Um, as Andy mentioned earlier, you two seem to have a banter and friendship between you. Will it be hard to flick that savage switch because of the friendship? No, like, like I said to him also, Neil Kennedy was a friend of mine also. He was even, he, he's a good man and I didn't want to hurt him, but Savage doesn't care. You know? I don't care about Tom Little till after the fight. Then we're going to have a beer, we're going to have everything. We can, we can do whatever, but... Uh, no, I don't care about that stuff. I have no sympathy. He's my nemesis on the 21st, and that's it. Have you seen this hippopotamus thing he's done, and do you think he'll try and get under your skin? Yeah, no, it's funny. I like it. I like every single one. I like it. Listen, Tom is a very, very cool guy, you know, and like I said, he never did something to, to like, uh, talk against me. No, he's very respectful to me, you know, because I think he respects me. He respects my power. He talks about it often and stuff, and it, there's nothing, no bad blood between Allen and Tom. You know, Savage got to do the business, but between Allen and Tom, there's no bad blood. Do you think if um, if you go in there and blast out Tom in a couple of rounds, do you think you'd get the credit, or do you think you'd get more credit if you went a few rounds with him and then beat him? Uh, listen, people want to see me beat them up in one round. You know, I, I, I'm all about the fans. You know, I don't think fans want to see me. I can stand with Tom for eight rounds. Why? Why would I do that if I can take him out? And, you know, I it's just not my style. You know? I'll be fooling you. I'll be fooling my audience. I'll be fooling my fans. I want to go in there and I'm ready to die in that ring. You know? And I'm not going to do that by boxing with Tom, by jabbing. <laughs> I don't care about that. This is a whole other different level. You know, He's going to see it. It's a whole different level. You know? I'm going to be on him since first millisecond. And Alan, I want to get your thoughts. There's been this recently announced bridgeweight division. You're kind of in, well, you're in that range. Do you have interest in that division? Well, of course I do. But I heard it's going to be, Nisa Sauland's going to operate that. Uh, I don't know. Some, so I, don't, I, I doubt it. he's going to give me a shot. But of course I'm interested. You know, if people want to see it, I mean, because that is my weight. I, right now I'm about 100 kilos. I think bridge weight is still 101. So I couldn't even make the heavyweight anymore. But uh, I do want to fight the Giants. I still want to be the heavyweight champion. You know, that, that was always the dream. And you saw a lot of people talk shit about my weight. But they stopped now. Nobody talks nothing now. I'm much smaller than Tom Little. Nobody said it. You know, because mm. I bring it. You know, and it, you, you'll see Tom Little is the biggest guy I fight yet. So you're going to see it. You know, he's not going to be physically stronger. He's not going to punch harder. He's not going to do nothing. The center of the ring is mine. And finally, for me, there's a lot of love for you on these shores from what we've seen of you. How have you taken to that, people being so receptive of you and wanting to see more of you? 
fight was just beautiful. Uh, just, just listen. I have three fights in two two months. That's all because of the fans, you know. And I'm just so grateful. Even the savage gets all mushy when he talks about <laughs> fans, you know. I just love. It. I love my fans. They're crazy, they're crazy, you know. They're fucking crazy. Sending me stuff every day, you know. <laughs> every day I get five, six, seven messages. I read them all. I can't answer them all because there's be all that I do all day. But I appreciate every single message, and I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna die in the ring for you, you know. I'm gonna give you my heart, you know. I'm gonna give you back. All the best for the weekend, Alan. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thanks, James. If we go to Danny Flexen for seconds out next. Hi, Alan. How you doing? Hello. How are you, sir? Very good. Good. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask. You've been very busy so far, despite the pandemic. You've managed to get a lot of fights. What's the secret behind that activity? Why is everyone calling you, wanting you on all the time? Well, I think it's the fans because I realize pretty early because it's not the boxer. I, I sell it to the fans. You know, if the fans want to see me, Eddie Hearn's gonna call me. You know, if the fans don't want to see me, I can I can dance on my head, but nobody wants to see that. You know, so it's just my style. You know, it's just the old school style of box. People miss it. You know, and I I take no no no. I play no games in boxing. You know, I just go all in. I go all out, all out war every time. People know it's going to be all out war. And there's a, most fighters out there when they turn pro, at least if they've got a good amateur background, they want to win a world title one day. If you're British, it's, there's a stepping stone. There's a journey, you know, British, European, Commonwealth, and then you get to a world ranking and so on. What's your path? What do you, When you look to the future, how do you get to that top level? Well, listen, I just want to entertain, really. That's why I'm different. I don't look at it. I don't know nothing about it. But Dillian White manages my career. I trust him completely. So he is 100% in charge. I just want to please the fans. He just sends me a name. I didn't ask for Tom Lee. I didn't ask for Neil Kennedy. I didn't know who he was. I didn't ask for Chandel Winters. They just sent me a name. I say yes. And I'm going to be like that all the time. That's why Eddie Hearn also likes him because he can put me in with anybody. Put me in with a Godzilla. Let's do it. You know, so it's no problem. And something I asked um, Fabio Wardley yesterday, who's also part of Dillian White's team, although you're obviously unhappy that um, White's fight with Povetkin got delayed, is there a positive side in that the undercard fighters like yourself will now get a lot more attention on Saturday? No, I would never look at it like that. You know, I'm very, I'm missing Dillian. You know, I hope he's going to be here for the fight night. It would be much better if he's here, you know. So, no, I, I never look at it like that. This is the first time I've been here. No, Dylan is my guy, you know, and I wish him all the best for because he made me, you know. He, he's he's a top dog, so, you know, I can only hope to be good as Dylan one day, you know, with the fans and with everything. Thanks, Alan. Really appreciate it. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think that's it for now. Um, just like to thank Alan for joining us, and we'll see you later this week, Alan, in the bubble. Okay, thank you very much. Take care, my friend. Bye bye. Yeah,